and welcome to another booktube video from me Lauren from Lauren and the Books. Look at that light shining in there, shall we? Shall we? It's gone now. Um, I was just about to say, how are you all? And how are you all? Um, today I'm going to be doing my April wrap up. Now I read 10 books in the month of April, um, which is pretty good going considering like I give myself the, um, I've started doing this thing right, where I give myself um, the sort of unofficial challenge because if I don't do it I'm not going to like starve myself or uh, punish myself in any way um, where I try and read a book every other day every other month um, so January March and in May I'll be doing it I'm trying to read a book every other month so in the, the other months I try and give myself like just just do what you want babes just do what you want read whatever you want um, obviously including like my book club stuff and things like that there's no there's no like pressure to get things done and these sort of like months of reading hardcore um, keep me on target for my um, for my 150 book challenge um, and then the months off is just a bit more casual but I've read 10 books um, in the month of April which is amazing so the first book let's have a bit of this the first book I haven't got actually here with me, I've, um, I've, I've re-gifted it to my goddaughter, um, is a, um, a picture book called Archie Snufflekins. Archie Snufflekins, something Tiberius cat. <laughs> it's a really, really cute um, picture book about a cat that um, along this road everyone thinks that they own him. Oh, Valentine, his other name is Valentine. Um, Archie Snufflekins, Valentine, Tiberius Cat. Um, he is owned, they, they think he's owned by an entire road, uh, the, the entire road thinks he owns him but really he's just sort of like going to each person's house, having something to eat, etc, etc, enjoying himself. Um, but there's one house he doesn't uh, visit on that road and it's the house that belongs to an old lady. Um, and um, it's just a sort of really, really cute, lovely story, really, really nice artwork. Um, I'll insert a picture of the front cover here if I haven't done so already because I'm so on that sort of thing um, and it was just lovely and I've re-gifted it to my goddaughter who will be who's coming up for her second birthday um, so and she loves cats um, so that was a really nice thing to do that was a really nice thing of me to do um, the next book I read was The Muse by Jessie Burton um, this I read for my um, book club at work now I read The Miniaturist um, oh He's falling out. I read The Miniaturist a, um, a couple of years ago when I just started Booktube. Sorry about the glare on this, it's a library book. Um, I read The Miniaturist a couple of years ago and really didn't get on with it. I was very, I'll be honest, I was bored by it. Um, but a few people had recommended this and wanted to read this for book club and it came out as a pot and I really, really loved it. So it, it, it flits from um, the 1960s, I believe. Let me double check. It feels like a million years ago since I read it. Yep, the 1960s. It flits in between then and... Live having a look to see what times it flits between. Oh, Isaac, there we go, that's the name. Um, the 1930, it, it splits between the 1960s and the 1930s. And in the 1960s, it follows a girl whose name is Adele, who works as a, um, a typist and a secretary. I'm going to pull that down because that glare is just getting on my wick. Um, who is a secretary or a typist at an art gallery. Um, and a piece of art is bought to the gallery. And then the 1930s follow the sort of like where this piece of art came from um, and I really really loved it there was a bit in it that I've actually marked here it was really written beautifully and there was a bit in it which I really really loved so at the, right at the beginning it's talking about um, it's talking about foundation colours so uh, makeup foundation and it says here um, in the makeup department in Arding and Hobbs at the junction, I'd only find things called buttermilk nude, blonde corn, apricot bloom, willow lily, and other such bad face poetry. And I just love that. I really, really did love that. And I've, I've sort of mentioned that to everybody I've spoken to about this. There's just one line in this book. I was just like, oh, that's really well done. Um, and yeah, I really, really enjoyed it flitting back and forth. When I first started reading it, I was like, oh, I'm much more into the 1960s stuff. But then when I was in the 30s stuff, I was loving that just as much. Um, so yeah, really enjoyed it. I gave it, I believe I might have given this, I, I think I gave it three stars. I would say three and a half stars. Now I've had a chance to chat about it. I'm popping it down here on this footstool. Never put those there before. Everything's new. Uh, the next book was a book that I read whilst I was on my holiday. It is Wander The Wanderers by Meg Howery. I won't go into loads of detail about these because um, I've done a wrap up when I was um, a, a holiday wrap up so I mentioned that and the, the next book there but um, I I like the characters in this I found myself enjoying the oh sorry so this is a book about, <laughs> let me tell you what it's about um, this is a book about uh, three astronauts um, going into a training program where they um, are training to um, go to Mars and everything on this training program fits what will happen to them when they're on their way to Mars so it follows the three astronauts Helen, Sergi and De not Dimitri 
Helen, Sergi, and I've forgotten the other chap's name, Yoshi. Um, and then it follows ca um, a person from their families back at home. So it follows Helen's daughter, um, Sergi's son, and Yoshi's wife. Um, I actually enjoyed hearing more about the people back at home than I did about the space stuff, um, which was surprising to me. But obviously, it was quite repetitive what they were doing in space. Um, and the stuff at home was much more interesting. For example, Dimitri, Sergi's son, was coming to terms with the fact that he was gay and he didn't know he was gay. Um, and there's just more fun stuff going on at home, more fun stuff, more interesting stuff for me going on at home. Um, and by the end, I was a bit sort of, I enjoyed it, but I didn't love it. I gave this three stars, but I, as I said, I've, I'll, I'll link the wrap up down below. Uh, the next book I also read on holiday was French Milk by Lucy Nisley. Now I really, really love this. Lucy Nisley is a um, illustrator. She writes uh, graphic novels and this one in particular was great because it's interspersed with photographs that she took whilst on holiday, like whilst her and her mother went to live in Paris um, for I think it was about a month. Um, and it's a really great like book about food and just things that she gets up to in Paris. And I've visited Paris a few times so it's quite fun to be able to see the, um, the photographs throughout. I feel like they're the exact two photos I just showed, the exact two pages I just showed you before. Um, but yeah, and I really love her art style, but as I said, I've spoken more about that. I'll link that down below. The next book I read was my favourite book of the month. Now, this is One by Sarah Crossan. Um, this tells the story of a set of conjoined twins, Grace and Tippy, um, and it's told from Grace's point of view. So Grace and Tippy um, have always been homeschooled, and now they are going to a, uh, a, normal, a, a normal school um, in, um, in America in the modern day. Um, this book is told in free verse, which is something that I hadn't experienced before apart from when I read this book for the first time last year. When I read it for the first time last year, I gave it four stars. I really, really loved it. But this time, it just, it must have been right book, right time, because I absolutely adored this. I gave it five stars. It made me laugh. It made me cry. It made me look up things about conjoined twins that I'd never even thought about before. It made me, it just, it just ticked all the boxes for me. And I really, really loved it. And um, as I said in my favourites video, this is, it's getting to the time of year now where a few people say to me, oh, what book should I read um, on my summer holiday? And I'm going to be saying, read this, because it's really, I read this in two sittings and I could have read it in one. Um, it's just all engulfing and in lovely and heartbreaking and just everything about it. I don't really like the feeling saying all the feels, but all the feels! The next book I read was I Call Myself a Feminist, The View from 25 Women Under 30. Um, I This is a, a set of um, feminist essays interspersed with sort of quotes um, from certain feminists. So let me have a look. There was one that I'd... Had I... Done this? So, for example, Chimamanda and Gozi Adichie's done some... Um, They've got a lot from Tina Fey, um, Kate Nash, who is a massive crush of mine. I love her, um, and I really enjoyed the um, the essays in here and the interspersions. It's it's a it's a nice, easy, pleasant read um, for me. Who sort of I still feel like I'm at the beginnings of learning. Just give him the back a little witch there. I'm at the beginnings of learning um, about feminism, and um, this was very helpful for me. And I think if you're at that place, then this will be a great place. To, to read. Some of the essays I really, really enjoyed. Um, and I, I really enjoyed this, so um, I would recommend this um, for those people who want to know a bit more about feminism. And there's just some really interesting essays in here, particularly um, from Laura Bates and Louise O'Neill, who are two of my faves. Um, the next book I read, oh, it's quite heavy, is um, the illustrated edition of Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Um, so David's mum kindly bought this for me last October, and I um, every year I like to reread the Harry Potters, and I like to start in January with the Philosopher's Stone and work my way through. So I suppose April to be reading the Chamber of Secrets is quite quite late in the year, really. Um, but I really love this, and the, the illustrations in this. Now, I hadn't seen the illustrations in this, so when the first Harry Potter book came out, I felt like I saw lots of them in... Um, on um, people's reviews and things like that, but I haven't seen so much of that. But this is my favourite one. Look at this. Look at it. This is when Harry comes out of the diary, and look at it. It's just amazing. There's so many art, like, so much colour. Um, but yeah, it's absolutely gorgeous. And also, what I realised reading this is that the first one under the dust jacket was red. That this one, the Chamber of the Secrets, is Chamber of the Secrets. Chamber of Secrets is orange. I'm really hoping they're going in um, rainbow colours. I really hope so. Um, so yeah, really love this. Five stars, obviously. Um, looking forward to seeing when Prisoner of Azkaban comes out because that's one of my faves. Now this pile's getting a bit precarious there. I don't know how long that's going to stay. The next book I read was a, illust uh, a graphic novel and this is uh, Raymond Briggs' When the Wind Blows. Um, I read Ethel and Ernest earlier this year and really enjoyed it and um, wanted to read a bit more of Raymond Briggs' things. And this um, follows um, a couple 
sorry again, it's from the library, so, so it's, it's much shorter than, there you go, my books, it's much shorter than um, Ethel and Alice, and it's told in a much more um, comic strip way. Um, but this tells the story of um, a couple who are um, sort of naively um, finding themselves in the middle of a nuclear attack and um, they're trying to do the things that the, um, that the governments um, instructed them to do while still trying to live a life and like uh, for example, after the blast, uh, the the wife in this is still concerned about um, concerned about her pillows and how much she loves her pillows and don't scratch the doors and things like that. And they're they're slowly sort of dying basically, and it was heartbreaking, but also like really compelling. Um, I think if you liked Ethel and Ernest, you would like this, but it is scary and sort of like made me feel oh, um, and I gave that three stars. Uh, then. The last two books I've read, I read Everything is Teeth by Evie Wilde and Joe Sumner. Now, I really, really love the artwork in this. So it's quite simple artwork. And then um, it tells the story of um, a, a, young la a, young, a young lass who's frightened of sharks. Um, and it sort of, she visits Australia quite often. She's got family there. And when she goes out there, um, she, she thinks much more about sharks. And so it's quite simple um, artwork throughout. And then when the bits where the sharks are mentioned, it's really graphic, gory. And all the, to the point, like when I first saw this I thought that these sharks were pictures I didn't realize that they I thought that they were actual photos I didn't realize they were drawings um and yeah it's sort of to do with fear and her relationship with her mother and father um and just really well done and very enjoyable so very much enjoyed that I gave that three stars I believe and then the last book I read um was Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children I started this on Cozy Reading Night um and I finished it this weekend um this is a book that was made into a film recently I've got the film front cover here um and this is about a young lad Jacob whose um, granddad when growing up has always told him quite strange stories about his background and things like that um involving monsters and things um and Jacob decides he wants to look more into it when his granddad sadly dies um he wants to look more into um, his granddad's background and he goes to visit wales um where his granddad went to school and he was um sent there when he was in the war um then throughout this book so that the writer of this book ransom riggs um found some photographs um when he in like a yard sale or a garage sale and he's interspersed this book with these photographs and linked them in to the to the story somehow um which to begin with i was like oh my god this is really unusual i've never read anything like this before and i thought it was a very very good um way of telling a story and quite visual um but by the end i found maybe the links were a bit contrived and a bit tenuous um so yeah, but I did really enjoy it and I liked the story um, and I really want to watch the film and it was a real easy read for me. I haven't read much uh, middle grade or YA wherever this may fall. I think probably YA for a long, long time. So it was a treat for me to be able to read that. I'm going to have a bit of my tea while I'm here. And I gave it three stars. So I enjoyed it and I'm looking forward to watching the film. Um, it had a little bit at the back with um, what the um, what the film looks like and it's got Eva Green in it. So maybe I might ask David if we can watch that today. Do you think he might let me? Maybe not. So those are the books that I read in the month of April. What did you guys read in the month of April? Did you read any absolute corkers? Um, what was your favourite book you read in the month of April? I'm always interested to hear what people's favourite books were in the month of April or any other months. Um, and that's it from me and I will see you all again soon for another booktube video.